What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while since I posted anything. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. Not a whole lot of stuff's been going on around here. Uh, since my tune got canceled because Eric got sick, uh, I ended up doing some traveling with my snowboard sponsor, doing a lot of snowboarding because you know it is winter time and that's what I do. Um, but I got some really good, good exciting news for you guys. Uh, I know I mentioned in a couple videos back that I was partnering up with Hafferland Performance on uh, some J-Series stuff because they're one of only a, a few handful of companies that offer anything aftermarket for the J-Series. So with that being said, I just got a care package from them. They sent me some, ooh, some cams. So these are the stage two regrind cams that they offer. Um, stage two just meaning I assume that the lope and lift, the lobe for the lift, whatever, I don't know. It just means that um, they're aggressive enough where you have to have aftermarket valve train, which I do, um, so we can definitely support that. The only thing I don't know is uh, if I should leave VTEC locked. I reached out to them to ask and I'm still waiting to hear back on that um, because how aggressive those cams are, I don't know if leaving VTEC locked is necessarily a good thing. Um, but without any further ado, I want to go ahead and put these bad boys in here um, so that way I can have them in when it comes time to get the car tuned. Uh, past that, I need to get some injectors. So um, once I get the cams in there, get it all back together, I'll probably leave the intake manifold and stuff off for the time being so that way when I get some injectors, uh, which will hopefully be happening relatively soon, I put those in and then we can hit the dyno. So <clears throat> these cams are going to make a huge difference being that I'm high compression now. Uh, I got the stroker kit and all that stuff. There's gonna be a lot of a lot more air movement in there And the cams are gonna allow the valves to open and close uh, much further allowing more air to flow through So in turn making a lot more horsepower. So I'm excited to get these things in here guys uh, There's a lot of work that needs to be done in order to make that happen I got to get the whole timing belt back off uh, Intake manifold all that stuff back off I'm hoping I don't have to pull the water pipe back off with all the new gaskets I just put on it as well as the AN fittings and all that stuff because that was kind of a mess And I don't want to have to dig back into that, but who knows if I have to I will so Yeah, without any further ado guys, let's hop right into this thing and get this shit show on the road So I just got all the timing covers pulled off because we're going to have to pull the timing belts off so we can get the cam gears off. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and start pulling the val or the intake manifold off um, and everything that goes along with that. So yeah, we're moving right along here, guys. So I'll get the intake manifold off then I can get all the spark plugs and wires and everything out of the way. And then, uh, yeah, we'll uh, see how far we can get with this thing. Also, I doubt I'm going to be able to get it completely done tonight, but I want to get as far as I possibly can. We've got dinner plans with my father-in-law, Mike. Um, but that's it. I got like 45 minutes or so left right now, so I should be able to get the uh, the whole intake manifold and everything off in that time. And then, uh, yeah, we'll resume this video tomorrow when I get off, and hopefully we'll be able to get it all done tomorrow, get it back together, and hear what it sounds like when it starts up, because I'm excited to see if it lopes or anything like that. But, yeah, so let's uh, carry on with this thing. All right, you guys. Well, I thought I took a time lapse of that whole thing, but as it turns out, it did not. The camera was not recording, so that's cool. Um, but anyways, I just got everything all apart. So now the front cam is exposed. I got all the rocker or the uh, yeah the rocker assemblies out. Um, so now I got to take the cam gear off, then this cam cap right here off, and then I can slide the cam out, slide the new one on in, and then reassemble from there. But this is probably gonna do it for tonight, guys. This is plenty far for what I was expecting to get done. Um, all I gotta do after that is the back, take the valve cover off and all that good stuff. So we're pretty much halfway there. Um, now all I gotta do is basically slide the cams in and reassemble. So yeah, got much farther than I was hoping to tonight and I'm really stoked about it. So tomorrow night when I get off work, I'll be right back at this thing. And uh, yeah, we'll get it together and hopefully fire up, see what it sounds like. 
All right, you guys, so I was really hoping to avoid having to do this, but it looks like I don't really have a choice. When the cam slides out, it's hitting this AN line right there, so I am gonna have to drain the coolant, unfortunately, and pop that one line off, and then I should be able to get it all the way out with no issues. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I gotta drain all the freaking coolant out so I can get to it. The back one looks like nothing's really gonna be in the way back there. We should be good. Um, I hope, assuming I have enough room between the strut tower and uh, the head. Um, so I should actually probably measure that before I get too far into this because if it's not going to work that way, I'm going to pull the heads off and it's going to be a whole different process past that. So um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and actually measure the cam real quick and make sure I have enough space to get in and out right there before we get too much further with this thing. But yeah, so unfortunately I got to drain the coolant. Either way, even if I have to pull the heads off, the coolant's got to get drained. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get on that now and then we'll uh, knock her out. So there's actually not going to be enough room to get this cam out um, because of this shock tower is in the way. But I'm hoping if I take this engine mount, the transmission mount I guess off, and maybe the one on the back, I can jack this side of the engine up enough where we could just get it, sneak it right past, maybe. So we're going to try that. The coolant's draining now. And then uh, once that gets empty, we'll go ahead and pop that AN line off and then we'll be able to pull this cam out. So. Yeah, we're getting there. That's going to be an issue, but hopefully it goes relatively smooth. I'm really not trying to pull that head back off, um, but we'll see what happens. Hopefully we'll be able to sneak it past. Time will tell. So. All right, you guys, just got the new cam in the front head. So now I just got to put the cap back on, put the uh, pulley back on, or the gear back on, and then uh, rocker assembly back in. And then we'll go ahead and move on to the back head, and we will knock this thing out. So let's get it. So I ran into a bit of an issue, and that issue is that my battery's about to die. So give me one second. All right, so I ran into a bit of an issue, I think. Um, so I went, I got the front cam in on the front head, and I went to put the cam in the back head, which actually I was able to slip right past the um, strut tower. I didn't even have to take the motor mount off or nothing. I could just barely squeeze it past. Issue was when I got the cam in, um, it didn't seat properly. It wasn't fitting in there correctly. Um, so I was like, oh, crap i put the wrong cam in the front head i got them backwards so i went ahead and took the front head all the way back apart as you can see took the cam back out of it and come to find out that they sent me two identical cams both for the front head i believe so i put them side by side you can see they are identical right so then i went over and looked at the stock cams that i just pulled out of the heads and you can already oh it's not it's kind of dark isn't it you can see already that they are not identical. So I think I've got two cams for the front head. So I just went ahead and sent them a message at uh, Hafferlin Performance to see um, where we go from here. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this thing all apart as it is so I don't have to try to take it all back apart whenever the other cam comes in because I imagine they're just gonna mail me the correct one. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it all apart how it is uh, and then whenever the correct cam comes in, then we'll go ahead and put everything back together. So unfortunately guys, we're not able to get the cams in today and I will not be firing the car up. Um, but at least I know that A, I do not have to pull the heads off to put the cams in because that would have sucked. And B, um, that 
we're basically ready to slip them in. So as soon as I get them, and it's only gonna take me probably an hour or so to put the cams in, put everything back together, and then we'll be able to fire it up. So it's gonna be a few days yet on that, guys, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, so I guess this is gonna do it for this video, guys, because I don't wanna make you guys wait a whole nother week or however long it's gonna be until I get those other cams in before I make or post something. So um, yeah, this is gonna do it for this video, guys. And uh, thank you all for watching, as always. I know it's been a lot of, uh, intermissions between videos i just got a lot of stuff going on at the moment but hopefully here in a week or so we'll get the correct cams in here and then we will be able to put it all back together so thank you guys for watching as always and we will see you in about a week